during this evolutionary co-adaptive dance between flowers and and bees, they, they, they both change in their characters. They both adapted to each other. Flowers adapted to be exploitative of the bees with the goal of pollination. This can be seen when you look at the color distribution of flowers. If you were to go out and look at the wild flowers in wild landscapes, uh, you would see a collection of colors uh, that reflected the, um, the preferences of the bees and their visual system. They have three different kinds of receptors and they're tuned in different ways and bees show preferences along this, this scale of, of, of color uh, that they can perceive. Especially interesting is the fact that they can see in the ultraviolet range, something that we can't do. And flowers have actually exploited the ultraviolet um, visual spectrum of bees in order to attract them. Here's an example here in this video clip. You can see the ultraviolet fluorescence of those flowers. But in general, flowers are supposed to be big targets, big advertisements. See me, come and visit me, and I'll give you a reward of nectar and or pollen, and uh, you will pollinate me while you're here. Flowers adapted their anatomy and morphology to be able to better attract uh, bee pollinators and to better exploit them by using them as as vessels to to transfer pollen from one flower to the other or from their anthers to their to their stigma. Uh, this is a case when you look at these flowers here. This is the primitive case. Uh, there's typically five different petals. There's five sepals. And then there are stamens, which have anthers at the end of the filaments. And this is the typical flower. But now if you look at the, the alfalfa flower uh, that has been greatly modified to exploit bees as pollinators, you'll see that there's been a fusion of petals to be this big banner out there that says, here I am, it advertises the plant, as well as the wings. They're, they're flashy, but then there's this keel. This again is the, is the modification of petals that have been folded so that they can capture and hold the reproductive column, which is composed of the, the anthers and the, the style and stigma. This is normally depressed down inside the keel and is only released when a, when a pollinator, an insect pollinator, particularly bees, stand on it, and then it will release that, that column that will then scatter pollen all over the, the, uh, the bee that visited the flower, so that it will then take it and transfer it to another flower. You can see here, these are tripped columns. The, the columns were down here in the keel, but they've been visited and they were tripped, and the, 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 the uh, column flipped up and threw pollen all over the bees. And here's a case here of a flower that's senesced already after having been tripped. This video shows uh, exactly the process. So this is an alfalfa flower, and this is being manually tripped. You see that it was depressed. The, the keel was depressed, and you can see now that the column has popped up. Here it is in slow motion. You can see the depression of the keel, and then the column is triggered and pops up and pollen flies all over the place. This was a really nifty adaptation for uh, scattering pollen all over a bee that she can then take to another flower and, um, and pollinate it. This is the wildest case of exploitation of, of insect pollinators. This is the hammer orchid. And this is its pollinator. It is a, a male a tinted wasp. These, male, these wasps live underground, and so the females aren't even winged, as this one here climbing up, climbing up the stem. They emerge from the ground, they, feed, they lay their eggs on, on uh, beetle grubs, and then their larvae develop on it. When they mature, then they come up. The females go up to the top of a plant, and then they open their mandibles and they advertise. They say, here I am, they send out a perfume. Males are winged. They locate the females on the basis of this perfume, 
that flies through the air. But in this case, you can see he flew right past her because he found something that's even a better signal that mimics her and does a better job of attracting him than the actual female did. So this is an or and hammer orchid. The orchid flower uh, mimics the, um, the female tented wasp and the male comes over thinking it's a legitimate female and he grasps her and he attempts to copulate with her. But now on the other side of this hinge flower, that's the petals on the one side. And then when it comes around to the other side, there the thorax bangs into the anthers and, and the, the stigma of the reproductive parts. And the, the pollen from the flower are deposit, is deposited in packets. Those are called pollinia. On the back of the, of the, um, the, wa the male wasp, he flies off with these pollen bundles on his back. He finds another flower, tries to copulate with it. It trips over and he hammers the pollen on his back into the, the reproductive parts of the flower and pollinate the, 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 the flower. The, the pollen stays there on the uh, stigma.